How did you do it, fanatical? Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. That's right, we got fanatical coming through, it's been just a minute, how you been, bro? <laughs> Well, they've been busy putting together the very positive bundle, number two. Very positive. I'm liking the look of it, it's only four dollars, so let's jump into it and see what games we got here. We've got Pathologic Classic HD, Pinstripe, Tesla vs. Lovecraft, Masquerada Songs and Shadows, The Age of Decadence, Cosmic Star Heroine, The Angry Video Game Nerd 2 Ass Simulation, and Shelter 2. Pretty nice set of games for only 50 cents each, and as a matter of fact, I have played most of them. I think the only one that I don't own here is Cosmic Star Heroine, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Let's jump in and look at each of these games individually. Pathologic Classic HD, a very positively rated game with a very miserable story. I don't mean miserable isn't bad, it's simply the kind of tale that encapsulates despair and desperation. There is no good and evil, there's only the world's harsh reality. It's a hard game to describe in only a few sentences. It's not the sort of game that clicks for many people, but if you enjoy impossible decisions and constant suffering while trying to survive, you'll probably really enjoy yourself. Do you choose to run around unarmed, or do you stab a child who's already terminal in order to recover bullets from her body to keep yourself safe for another day? You will get hungry, and tired, and sick, your clothes will become worn, and your weapons will break. People around you will drop dead from the plague, and you'll find yourself agonizing about which needs should be met first. This game is an experience that will definitely change the way that you look at gaming forever. It didn't manage to grip me especially because I do like a reward for my suffering, but it's definitely a bold choice for a game studio to make. Mass respect. Pinstripe, a short but beautiful adventure story. You'll be in and out in around two hours, and by the time it wraps up you'll be wishing that there was more. It will tug at your heartstrings, and if you're a big softy like me, you're even liable to shed a few tears. The puzzles in the game itself are relatively simple, but you can see the cleverness behind their design. There are lots of things that feel like they were forgotten about during development, such as money being utterly useless in the second half of the game. Plenty of mechanics seem to only be in place to serve as achievement fodder, but for all of the dropped ideas, this game still manages to be fun and interesting. You'll be pulled through the entire game before you even realize it, by the great art style, fantastic voice acting, and a narrative that is worth experiencing for a second time. There are even secret rooms and weapons that can only be accessed during the second run, and that's enough to keep it fun and interesting enough for the relatively short playtime. Tesla vs. Lovecraft, 10 Tons Limited, is a developer that works pretty closely with this channel, full disclosure. We've covered plenty of their titles either in videos or streams, including Judge, Crimson Land, and Neon Chrome. And if I felt like I needed to give them a reality check, then I definitely would. But the truth is that they absolutely know what they're doing when it comes to the top-down twin-stick shoot-'em-ups. While I enjoyed Neon Chrome's character classes and Judge's mission assignments a bit more, Tesla vs. Lovecraft is still a great title with a very straightforward premise. Play as Tesla. Kill all the Eldritch Horrors. Rinse. Repeat. Luckily, there are a ton of different skills and upgrades along the way. There are also three difficulty levels to plow through. Though the difficulty doesn't really seem to do all that much, aside from making the creatures you're fighting just a bit more tanky. While Tesla vs. Lovecraft certainly isn't my favorite entry from 10 Tons, it's definitely a solid title that's worth a shot if you feel like making things go boom in a twin-stick arena shooter. Masquerada Songs and Shadows An interesting title with nice visuals and good dialogue, but it feels like the story is lacking the punch that I would expect from a game that relies so heavily on narrative elements. The game is not an RPG in the traditional sense. You literally have zero choice about what happens during the story. It's more like a visual novel with some tactical combat mixed in between the story beats. You will get to choose which masks to take into battle, and each of them differs quite a bit, but that's the only decision that is made, and it does nothing to affect the story. Even the combat is relatively straightforward and doesn't do that much to set itself apart if you discount the fact that your magical powers are derived from a set of masks. The combat zones are large and feel kind of incomplete. I'm mostly frustrated at the potential that this game had, and it failed to live up to any of that. I think that this game would put less of a sour taste in my mouth if it didn't attempt to swing the RPG title. 
As it stands, it's obviously not the worst thing ever, but I probably will never end up playing this one to completion. The Age of Decadence, a very hardcore combat RPG that will turn you inside out if you do not have a proper understanding of all the actions that you can take during combat. You will need to use the dirtiest tricks in the book if you want to even stand a chance. And even then, a couple of bad RNG rolls can cause victory to slip from your grasp, even if the strategy that you are implementing is completely on point. It can be frustrating, but it does make the taste of victory all that much sweeter. While Age of Decadence doesn't grant a Fallout level of choices, it definitely does feel a lot more flexible than Masquerada. In one of the earliest fights in the game, you'll learn how to cripple opponent. This guy you're fighting has massive dodge, but if you hit him with bolas and then attack his legs a couple of times, his chance to dodge gets completely neutered. This is exactly the kind of dirty tactic that I was talking about. The story serves decently, but the combat is what actually drags me back to this title. You can of course talk your way out of combat, but that's not how I do things. <laughs> this is a game that is not for the easily frustrated, but it certainly offers a rewarding experience. Cosmic Star Heroin! As I said, the only game that I don't own in this bundle, and ironically, the one that I feel like I want the most. <laughs> if you're into JRPGs, then Cosmic Star Heroin is a must-play indie experience. Great characters, amazing visuals, with a soundtrack so hot, it feels like it might burst into flames. The combat system forces you to rest instead of spamming your best attack over and over again. Every turn you gain a hyper point, and once your bar is full of hyper points, your next attack will be significantly buffed, so you want to be rested and have that attack ready. It makes combat feel engaging. There's really nothing not to like here. No random battles, just a short and sweet RPG with minimal filler. You hardly even need to grind unless you feel like buffing up your characters. Random battles and grinding might be staples of the JRPG genre, so some people might feel cheated. The story and characters also feel a bit cliché, but are definitely interesting enough to keep me anticipating what will come next. If you picked up this title, let's trade. I want it. <laughs> Angry Video Game Nerd 2 Ass Simulation Whether or not you can appreciate the AVGN's sticky style of curse-laden humor, this game actually performs surprisingly well. It's a solid yet short action platformer that features a fair amount of humor. Of course, most of that humor is derived from AVGN quotes and references that I'm sure plenty of people won't catch, but they don't really detract that much from the gameplay. There are lots of secrets and unlockables to find, or you could just blitz through all of the levels. Depending on what you do, you might get one of two different endings. Difficulty settings are also a nice touch. On easy mode, you have 50 lives to clear each stage, which might seem like overkill, and it sort of is, until you reach the last level. At that point, you'll be letting out your own string of curses, and calling this game the festering shit pile of donkey diarrhea that you wish it was so you can simply blame it on the game. But deep in your heart, you'll know that this game is built well, and that any failures you might experience are your own fault. This might push you to new heights in your attempts to beat the game, or you might switch it off and just go have a beer. The last level of this game will truly separate the men from the nerds. Shelter 2! I covered this game a while ago. There's my face. <laughs> and I really did enjoy it myself. The art style is nice, and the game itself is fairly immersive, thanks in no part to the mewling of your four little babies. You play as a mother lynx that is attempting to raise a set of happy and healthy kitties. It's easier said than done, of course. You'll need to chase prey, and not all prey is big enough to nourish all of your growing fur babies. I ended up losing one of my kittens in the first playthrough, and it was absolutely heart-wrenching. Once your babies are nice and grown, you'll get the option to continue playing the game as one of them, which is very cool. You can go back and have a look at the family tree. The game might feel a little bit bare-bones, like I expected to get assaulted by wolves or bears at some point, but it never happened. The only other wildlife I ever saw were birds that I couldn't catch, since I can't climb trees, and the deers, rabbits, and mice that you use to feed the babies. It was still a fantastic experience, despite the simplicity, and it offered more of an open world feel than the original Shelter, which is nice. I'm hoping to see Shelter 3 sometime in the future. So if you're missing a few of these games, I think it's kind of a no-brainer to pick up this bundle. Four dollars isn't all that much, and there are definitely some great games in here. My favorite probably being The Age of Decadence. Uh, Pathologic also has a lot of merit to it. I think if you haven't experienced that game before, then you definitely should. It's a bit slow, a bit of a slog, but it will make you agonize in a way that 
basically no video game that I've ever played before has made me do. So big props to it for that. Also, Pinstripe, that's that's a really, really good one, even though it's super short. But I mean, for 50 cents, if you can squeeze whatever four or five hours out of it, that's a win in my book. There are absolutely no games in this bundle that I would call completely meh. Masquerade is the closest that we get to that, and even that has some merit. I think I'm mostly frustrated by what the game could have been <laughs> compared to what it actually is. But I hold no ill will. I'm sure Masquerade 2 will come out and capitalize on all of those things that were missed out on before. Like, give me some traps or puzzles or something to do in the levels. Instead, they're just big giant fields of nothing, <laughs> which it's super disappointing. The other very positive bundle, which I didn't cover, that was before I started covering these. It featured four games. The Sexy Brutal, Dex, Bastion, and Rhyme. Which are all pretty good games, but nothing compared to what is contained in this bundle. And the original very positive bundle was $3.50. So you're paying like 80... 87 cents per game. Which here you're paying 50 cents. Oh my god, it's just so good. How did you do it, Fanatical? So, I do hope that you guys will let me know what you decided to do with this bundle. Again, I am on the lookout for Cosmic Star Heroin, so if you'd like to trade or donate that, I would be supremely appreciative. Because as much as I like this bundle, I'm probably not going to pick it up. $4 for one game ain't my jam. Although it would add a bunch to the key hoard. But my key hoard is looking pretty strong at the moment, even though we are giving away one game per week in the Discord. So join the Discord if you'd like to get in on those giveaways. Also check me out on the Twitter. Check out the Patreon as well. Big shout out to Damon Darkstar and Nika the Legend for supporting us on the Patreon currently. Once again, friends, this has been Bundle Banter, the fanatical, very positive two bundle. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Thank you as always for listening. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, bye bye